Will. I'm Emily. I'm Scotty. I'm Greg. And I'm Brian, and together we make Roundtable Industries. So before we get into exactly what our product is, I'd like to give you all a brief summary of our ideation process. So when we started putting a problem to solve, we thought of not being able to locate Wi-Fi, not being able to wake up on time. And then Emily told us how much she did laundry with the drawstring thought of our hoodie. And at first we all just kind of dismissed this. We didn't think this was a problem they needed solving. But the more we asked around, asking teachers, neighbors, friends, family, and athletes, we realized that this is a huge problem with no current good solution. So we created it, the hoodie hoop. The hoodie hoop is a tool that allows you to easily reach out the drawstring through any of your drawstring clothing garments in under 20 <coughs> seconds. So there's three current methods out there that people use to solve this problem. They either do it by hand, they use a safety pen, or they use a clothes hanger. Bottom line, these methods are ineffective and are tedious. And for that reason, we'll show you a quick demo of how that hoodie hoop works. Huh? I also have some prototypes for you guys. It's kind of like so, oh no, your hoodie string falls out. That's not a problem. All you have to do is clip the clip against the aglet, insert it into one end of the, of the hood, and just start weaving it through. Uh, we like to say this method, it's called bunch, scrunch, and pull. Bunch, scrunch, and pull. <laughs> and before you know it, the hoodie pops out then. And presto, you can use it. It's as easy as that. So since the beginning of uh, the creation of this idea, we've gone through a lot of prototypes. As you can see, this is the first 11 right here. <laughs> it's gone from a very primitive design, starting with just a chopstick tape to a uh, alligator clip. <laughs> and then we've moved on to a 3D printed model. On the right, you can see it's a much thicker model, still with the tape that connects the alligator clip. And then on the left, we have our newest model, which is a lot skinnier, and it's taped with a bolt. As you can see, the diameter of this is of the first and second 3D print model is substantially different. And then that's the bolt mechanism that keeps the alligator clip attached to the plastic rod. And what you're holding today is just a representation of our product so you can get a feel for the dimensions of it and how it would uh, go together. All right, so now we're gonna take you through a brief virtual tour of our website and social media aspects. All right, so this is our landing page to our website. And when you get on there, the first thing we want everybody to see, every customer that comes in, we want to see this How It Works video, because we want to introduce them to the product and show them how really quick and easy this product is. So they're gonna click on the video, they're gonna look at it, they're gonna see how it connects, they're gonna see a quick video of just how it goes through. And this video, actually, we have it going in 10 seconds, so they're interestingly gonna, or instantly gonna get interested in the product. So then you're gonna go down, you're gonna see the current method and what they're gonna be buying. So then after that, they're obviously gonna be interested, right? So they're gonna go up to the About Us tab. So they're gonna go down, they're gonna see, meet the team. And right here is a quick, uh, summary video of what we've been working on all throughout the class, it's about two minutes. And they're gonna see all about us, what we've gone through, all the prototypes we've gone through. And down here, they're gonna see uh, uses and a quick picture of the alligator clip and just how it's really attached. So after that, they're obviously gonna wanna contact us, get in touch with us, let's know what they're about. So um, we have right down the right here, we have email address, Twitter, links to all our social media platforms and emails. So they're gonna go back here, they might buy one, or they might wanna go actually check out those social media sites. So click on the little widget there, and they go to our Twitter page. So our Twitter page is one of our main ways we keep in contact with our prospective customers and people who really just wanna support us. So here we just have a quick um, video here. You can see we have designer Greg Carter has taken the final step and added a magnet, another idea that we have to do. Um, here we have different prototypes. And it really just shows like the evolution of our product. The Facebook app uh, works in a similar aspect. So here we have just some more pictures of the prototype, links to our YouTube page so they can just watch the videos that we post, uh, new uh, logos and designs. So then after they've looked at all our Facebook, Twitter, all our social media, they're, there, well, they're hopefully going to go back to our landing page, think about it, think about it, think about it, and now they're going to buy that product. <laughs> We assume that our early adopters would be just parents or kids that have an activities and that just need an easy and quick fix to the drawstrings or hoodie strings that are falling out of their clothing. Then we, after doing interviews, we decided to broaden that market to just anyone in the household that does laundry that needs a quick and easy fix. 
our total addressable market, which we found by going on the U.S. Census and just taking all um, U.S. households, is about 115 million. But we narrowed that down to just households in Cook County, which would be about two million. So right now, there's only one viable competitor out there. It's called the Restrainant, and it comes in at a whopping 32 and a half inches, which just isn't practical for usage, storage, uh, even travel. It just doesn't make sense. Price more than doubles the hoodie up at twenty dollars, which is extremely high price for such an easy solution. And it's only sold on Amazon and his personal website, so you will not be seeing the restringing in stores. So what makes us different? It's the fastest method. We've tested it with multiple hoodies, pants, drawstrings, and it always clocks in under 30 seconds. It's eight inches, the perfect size for being uh, effectively able to use it and fix your problem. It's cost effective at only $6. This is easily attainable for anybody that experiences this issue. And it's the simplest design. Um, you just open the clip, attach it to the drawstring, scrunch, bunch, pull, and you're good to go. So we really only have two main startup costs. The first being an injection mold. We spoke to manufacturers in China, and we determined the cost of an injection mold would be anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500. Um, and what that would allow us to do is take our alligator clip and insert it directly into the, the rod, so it's just one solid piece. We also spoke to manufacturers in the US and we, we determined the cost would be around $5,000 here. But if we do it here, we would have stronger relations with our manufacturers, as well as it would most likely be higher quality. The second sort of cost we have is a provisional patent. That would cost anywhere from $130 to $200. And with the provisional patent, we basically just get our foot in the door. What that allows us to do is it just gives us a one year um, kind of delay to get our patent because at our current phase, uh, a full-blown utility patent, which costs anywhere from $2,000 to $7,000, just isn't feasible right now. So we're looking at that. All right, obviously your business, we have some cost of it. So um, basically what we've learned is that our cost from the manufacturer would be established, and they would incur the cost of the alligator clip, the, the plastic, and the labor that goes into making it. So we would get it in at one straight cost, from $1 to $2, so it keeps our margins mainly consistent. Um, the cost of packaging, Really ranges on where we buy it from, but we're thinking of getting a cylindrical tube to protect the hoodie hoop and put our logo on it, get a brand name out there, and let people know what they're receiving. That's somewhere between 20 and 80 cents a box. And shipping obviously differs between whether we're going for China or whether we're going for the US, but regardless, we'd have to freight it to somewhere and then deliver it to our customers or retail stores. So currently, we only have one operating cost, and that is to maintain our website. It comes in at $8 per month, and that's just a way for our customers to contact us and potentially buy the products directly online. And as we uh, increase our inventory, we want to start seeing the hoodie hoop in various stores, including craft shops, convenience stores, and discount retailers like Target and Walmart. And this can greatly be supplemented through social media as more people get involved as the popularity increases. Right, this is our total projected revenue for the first five years. Um, we started off with selling 1,000 units in our first year, which we think is obtainable. And you can see we come in at a $500 profit, around $500 profit in the first year. And that's including the cost of our provisional patent, as well as the cost of a new mold that we have to incur. And as you can see here, our projected revenue goes up each year uh, due to the law of diminishing marginal returns in which we would get our prototypes for, or our product for less each time. Uh, the most transparent way for us to measure our success is through customer feedback. Up to this point, customer feedback has been very valuable in both uh, solidifying our price point and getting a solid design that works and is effective in the best way. Uh, this product has a very good I want one factor, where as word of mouth spreads and popularity increases, people really want the product because it's a great product that works. And this is greatly supplemented by gaining traction on social media through shares and likes. So what we need, we need, um, what we need is going to depend on what we get and what we talk to for manufacturers and packaging. We're in contact with about 15 people in China, and we're also in contact with people here in the United States. Um, so packaging, we found around a medium price, about 50 cents per box. Um, but again, it's all going to depend on if we decide to stay. And also shipping is going to depend if we stay or if we decide to go to China. Another what we need is for our provisional patent, which is just we want it for a safety net, because it's not feasible to be able to have a real patent, because it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. And right now, we can't afford that. But we'd like to get that in the future. So if we can achieve all these things, none of us have any doubt whatsoever that the hoodie hoop will be in stores, on shelves, and in homes. Thank you so much for your time. Any questions? This is a great concept. Uh, I know laundry rooms are, tend to be messy in that. 
how do you, what are your thoughts as far as it doesn't get lost in the laundry room? Right, so that was actually one of the first things we thought about. And we've actually tested um, implementing a magnet into the hoodie hoop. And we have one prototype that has a magnet inside of it, and it would easily just connect right to your washer, dryer, so you're never going to lose it in the, in the, uh, you know, the mess of the laundry room. You could actually magnetize the clip. The clip would be yeah. super easy to magnetize. Yeah. It would stick right to your washer. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys get the plastic for this? So actually, um, yesterday we talked to Mr. Shiso over there, and he went out and uh, just found a plastic manufacturing place, I believe, on mm -hmm. some foot-long plastic. Uh, it's a nylon rod. Nylon rod. The beauty of the nylon is it's extremely slippery, incredibly dur durable and flexible, yet it still retains the, the, the shape. So I thought that was probably the best type of plastic to use for the for the product. Um, it's also extremely inexpensive. So with the nylon rod, though, there'd be no need for injection. No need for injection mold at all, so you'd save, you'd save thousands if that's the case. It, it's currently attached with just, just a dab of epoxy and it's crimped around the uh, alligator clip, and then uh, it's all cleaned up with heat tape, so that way it's slippery, right? So it doesn't, so you don't see all the rough edges. The, the, the rough edges. So it's a, it's a very simple. It's it, even it's simple to make it. And what and you're seeing now is this is ready for market. Absolutely, I, I really don't think you have to do a whole lot more to it. Yeah. Right, that's what we were hoping for. So with this design that you guys have right now, um, it's very cost effective. It's easy to make, easy to produce. I mean. 13 in 20 minutes? Correct? Yeah, I, I made 13 last night in 20, min in 20 min minutes. Right, so, my so it's, it's something we could do by ourselves, like without a manufacturer, but yeah. down the road, if we need to go more broad scale, we could get a manufacturer. And we might be able to fund yeah. that a lot easier with the sales from this phase one prototype. I understand this is a prototype. Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. I'm okay with that, but this clip is very difficult to use on your prototype. Yeah. So um, it is. You're, you're cognizant of the fact that it would be. Yeah, be so, much easier. so this is kind of like a new idea, the epoxy on it, so we're still kind of getting used to mm -hmm. it, like Good. getting it in there. But all our other prototypes we haven't bolted in, it's more like a simple design, something we're using. Yeah. They've all been fine. If you okay. want to see this one, I can show you that it's a bolt and it has no epoxy, so it opens a lot quicker. Yeah, there's a dab of epoxy got on some of the on some of the hinges during the uh, oh, process. Yeah, it is. That's what that is. is. But it's you want it to type two, so it doesn't yeah. let go of the middle. Right. It's, it's it? kind of just like a thicker. Yeah. It is, but what I found, the thicker ones didn't work as easy. I did. Uh, I had my 12 year old daughter doing it last night, and, and she was doing her uh, her hook in 50 seconds. 50 seconds, just like. Yeah. She's like what is the selling price again? Six dollars. Six dollars. Yeah. And we're thinking of somewhere between six and seven dollars, depending on whether we include the magnet and the price. Right. And that competitor you showed is substantially more. Yeah, than it's, that it's, it's it's always been double what we're doing. Okay, so they're 12 bucks and you're six. Right. Yeah, he starts at 20. Yeah. 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 20. Yeah. 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 They're pretty good numbers. They could be a lot better. I just, I just saw from our like target market, there's huge potential, and he's definitely not capitalizing on that. But he's gotten sales. He's been on like a, like a shopping network, and for a couple minutes, he's gotten a lot of purchases. So there's a market and there's a want. So six dollar price value, um, possibly like in stores where people will see it while they're shopping and realize that they have this problem for six bucks. Why not? Mm -hmm. We feel like that we'd really be able to just take over the market. And one thing that we've kind of looked at him is just kind of like proof of concept. Like we don't have really have sales, but we know that this is a product that will sell. Mm -hmm. Just because he does have sales, but he has less than 1% of the market share right now. Mm -hmm. Is this something that when you go online to order a hoodie, mm -hmm. uh, that, you, that you could partner with whoever is selling that hoodie, that if you spend X amount of dollars, you'll throw it though? Yeah, so we've, we've thought about that. Um, that's always been in discussion and some like hoodies, you buy them, they come with drawstrings, so then if like, what, you buy the hoodie hoop, you get drawstrings with it, you buy a hoodie, you get a hoodie, uh, hoodie hoop with it. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, right now, we're just focusing on making the product, actually getting it mass produced, and then we'll take it from there, I guess. But we're definitely considering this. Some of our possible channels we were kind of thinking of, kind of out of the box, we weren't sure if we are going to get from like, big store like Target, it's obviously hard to get into, but like, we were thinking of going like specialty hoodie shops, like that sort of thing, so people would go there. Everybody's going to have that problem if you go to the hoodie shop, so. Yeah, yeah. Let me just say this doesn't have to only work for 
uh, sweatshirts. So right. for a uh, multitude of uses. You can use it on sweatpants, basketball shorts, bikinis, you name it, it'll yeah. work. Just um, tap into the college campuses at the bookstores. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's also yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, there's a huge, huge, huge market for this. Everybody, well, everybody needs one. Yeah. And with a with a product, you, you an investor is also going to look at what what else can you go with it too. But I think one of the biggest things, and again, I've got teenagers, is with this easy application, you can actually switch out the color of your hoodie drawstring according to your school colors yeah. according to the day exactly. i mean you change up the the, the garment mm -hmm. yeah. and then you've got another product you sell this with a, a five or six different color drawstrings that you can reuse for your hoodie right. yeah. so it's not only just a product that helps fix it falling out it's also a product that allows you to easily customize your hoodie or your pants to your your school colors or whatever you want which is a really nice uh, side to the hoodie Tell me about the second product line we were talking about in class with the gym shoes. So, right. have you guys ever had frayed gym shoes with the little plastic pieces that you like tie your knots with and just like it comes off and it's all frayed? Yeah. And it's harder to tie your shoes and it's harder to weave it through the, the holes in your shoes if you're, if you're restricting them. Uh, we we're thinking about making a separate product to fix that because we all know how annoying teams that can get. Cool. Great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Yeah.